Hey, this is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine. Haven't done one of these in a long time, but something happened to me the other day that made me think of an interesting video that you guys might like. It's time for me to replace my aging Leatherman and get a new one. Uh, and I've been carrying the same one for a, a long time. It's kind of interesting when you go to buy a multi-tool, how many choices there are out there. There's, a, there's just a, a ton. Uh, every, every company under the sun now makes, makes multi-tools. For a, a knife company, they're making a multi-tool, at least one. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. They all have their pluses and their minuses. Because Leatherman's are the one that I happen to know the most about, that's what we're going to kind of stick with today. The Leatherman tools came about, they were originally designed or thought up in the uh, late 1970s, and they reached real popularity in the early 80s. I believe it was uh, Cabela's and um, maybe L.L. Bean and Gander Mountain picked them up, and they started selling them in their stores, and after that, things just took right off. And there was always a mystique about why it was a Leatherman, you know, a certain amount of, there were stories, and maybe not countrywide, but here in the Northeast, uh, I don't know about in the rest of the nation. A lot of people said that they named him the Leatherman after this character that used to travel uh, national parks in the forests of the Northeast back in the 1800s, and he was all dressed in uh, skins and leather and uh, rawhide. And he got the nickname, the Leatherman. And he had uh, a route that he followed based on the seasons, and they could always tell what season of the year it was by where they would find this mysterious Leatherman. Well, he was real. That's a true story. But he has nothing to do with the knife or how the knife got its name. Um, actually, the original Leatherman was designed by a gentleman named, believe it or not, Tim Leatherman. <laughs> So he started the company, that, that's, uh, that's where the company got its name. It just happened to go along with a lot of other things. It made a great name for the tool. But he originally designed it uh, in the 70s. He was in Europe on vacation and driving around an old clunker of a Fiat that he was having a hard time to keep running. And he was annoyed at the fact of all the different tools he had to carry with him to do minor little things. And it hit him that it would be kind of a great idea to design basically a Swiss Army knife, but with an attached pair of pliers, needle nose pliers. And he had a hard time marketing it and, of course, designing it at first. Eventually, it came to be in the form of the PST-1, Pocket Survival Tool 1. Those were manufactured for... Well, actually, they're still manufactured, but it took uh, probably close to a decade before they even bothered to come out with many variations. They just left that one alone, and, and they kind of ran with it. Now, Leatherman's got like 30 different tools, and they're all basically a takeoff on the original pocket survival tool, and that's just one company. Um, I carried one of the original Leathermans for many years, Leathermans, Leathermen, for many years, and uh, eventually it broke. I sent it back for warranty, and they ordered honored the warranty, but instead of sending me back a uh, original uh, Leatherman PST, they sent me this Leatherman rebar. And at first that annoyed me a little bit because it, it didn't seem like it was as really well made as the original. It's kind of got some more... Yeah, it's a little more tinny. It's not as solid. But uh, actually, in a lot of ways, this tool is actually superior to the original. Uh, it does some stuff and has some stuff that the original didn't have. Now that there are all these different variations on the original tool out there, they're really kind of a purpose-built thing for whatever activities you do in your everyday life, you know? So let's look at some of the difference in, uh, in these tools. The knockoffs are everywhere. This isn't really a knockoff. This is another one of my favorite ones. This is the only uh, off-brand one, I guess you could call it, that I have. This one's a Kershaw, and it uh, it actually, not only is it needle-nose pliers, but it's actually needle-nose vice grips. And uh, the only downside to it is these don't fold inside the handle, so you have a much bigger package. 
the deal or carry around with you. You're not going to carry this on your pocket. In your pocket, you're going to want it, you know, in a sheath on your belt. Because it's just too big. But still a nice tool. So your Leatherman are all about the same. You know, they have pretty much, you know, at first glance, you could say they all basically have the same features. But it's being kind of short-sighted to say that. Um, this is the one that I have that's the most like the original. And as you can see, it's much more square. It's not as form fit. Um, it does have locks for the blades on the back, which is good. But when the uh, tool itself is closed, there are no tools exposed. So to get anything out of this, just like the original, you have to open the tool. So you have to open the tool to get to your saw, to get to your knife blade. You have to have the tool open for everything. Now you can get the knife blade out. If you want to use just the knife and then you can close it back up, that's not a problem. But some of these new ones, for instance, this one, with that all closed up like that, when you want your knife, it's just as easy as doing this. And I don't know if you can see the difference between these two. This handle is actually sort of in the way of this knife. So it gives you a cutting angle like this, where this one you can you can set right down and cut something flat. I like these. I like them all, but I carry these more often than I will carry one like this, just because I don't need to open the whole tool up to get at the tools that I use the most. And yet I still can open it up and get at all the other ones. All the early ones were like this. They were just pliers. You open and close them with the introduction of, I think it might have been the Wave, which is, I think actually the, the Wave is the most popular by far, they claim. It's the most, most sold Leatherman multi-tool that they have. But they came out with this whole line that included the Wingman and the Sidekick. Uh, I'm not sure about the Wave, but the uh, there's another one called the Rev also that is very similar. And one thing about these is there's a spring. So when you release it, it opens. You have to hold it closed, which is actually a lot more handy than what you think. As you can see, this one's the same way. And that's nice. And again, both of these knives, you can get at the blade and the scissors or the blade and the saw from the outside without opening the knife up. Whereas this Leatherman rebar is more like the original Leatherman PST and that it has only the very basic tools in it and it's very manual. One big upgrade to these, I don't know if you can see, the uh, wire cutter jaws are actually replaceable. You can buy new jaws for your wire cutters and just bolt them right on there without having to send your tool in for service work which is very nice. That's a nice touch. Um, these aren't as user serviceable as these. These are actually held together with bolts, with these little torx head bolts. I don't think that is the case with these, these things here. I think they have to have a special tool at the factory to get into the handles. You can still replace the jaws, but the only one of these I ever sent back was broke right off. It was broken too. So there isn't a lot of that it really ever happens to them other than maybe the wire cutters wearing out, which is easily avoidable by changing the jaws. One other thing that's different, even though this actually you could still carry in your pocket, it's just a bare bones tool and it was made to be carried in a sheath. And that is absolutely fine. I carried one in a sheath. I've carried buck knives in a sheath many years. But what I'm finding um, when I'm carrying one of these at work, or even if I'm just carrying them when I'm going about my daily business, is that I really like the ability, along with the fact that I can pull a knife blade out 
without having to open up the rest of the tool and the blade is right on the bottom. So if I want to cut something flat on a cutting board, I can. These pocket clips, that allows you to drop the knife into your pocket and still hold it in one spot. And they stay there pretty well. This one I actually broke the pocket clip on. But uh, it's for me, it's it's far more practical to have it in my pocket like a clip knife out of the way. I don't get, I'm up and down ladders all the time, in and out of equipment, uh, in and out of vehicles. Uh, sheath knives, you know, like ones that you have a, uh, an actual sheath for, uh, you know, something like this, bouncing around on my belt, always seems to get in the way. And that's just personal preference. That may not matter to you. That's why I say, if you get ready to buy one of these things, go someplace like the Swiss Knife Shop. They got a great website. They sell, uh, they're a distributor for the Leatherman brand and also being the Swiss Knife Shop, Victoria Knox. They carry all the Swiss Army products and they have a great website and their pages do a great job of explaining the differences and the features of each of the products. For Victorian Ox and for Leatherman, I have to add, you have to kind of look and see what's right for you and, and look at what the tool is you use the most and pick the model of the Leatherman that has everything you need and not as much of what you don't so you're not carrying around a lot of extra garbage with you. Um, I see these as tools. I don't look at them as being any kind of a tactical thing or a weapon. Uh, they're just a tool. You know, you throw it in your pocket and when you see something that needs doing or fixing, a lot of the times you find that you have the tool to fix it right on your person. And you could say the same thing about, you know, this multi-tool or any of them, Gerber, Schrade, Old Timer, Uncle Henry's, they all make great multi-tools. They all do. I'm not putting any of them down. The Leatherman's, they're just the one I happen to know the most about and the ones I've always bought. And another reason for that, these tools are all about the same price. And you're looking at right around 70 bucks. And I know that seems like a lot, but when you think about all the different functions that these things have in them, all the different stuff that they do, you know, it's like the, the amount of tools is, is just crazy that they have in them. And you got this one here has a, of course, the knife and the saw. I'm going to end up cutting myself trying to get all this stuff out. You've got all screwdrivers. Oh, my word. Pretty much everything. Uh, find the one that has the feature that suits you best. And, you know, you may want a sheath knife. You may want the original pocket survival tool that they still make. You will find there is some price difference between some of the models because there's actually a difference in the materials that they use to make them. But I'm going to go out on a limb here right now and tell you that this Leatherman sidekick is pretty much identical to this Leatherman wingman. And I've been carrying this one for probably five or six years straight. That has been to work. It's been everywhere with me. I've, I've taken it everywhere. And the only reason I retired it was because the pocket clip broke. So I decided to get a new one. To be honest with you, I figured my wife Shelly needed a Leatherman anyway. She didn't have one of her own. So I thought she wouldn't use the pocket clip. I just give her this one and I get a new one to replace it. I don't know, honey. Do you use yours? If you've only had it a few weeks, do you find yourself using it more and more? Yes. I mean, because if you... If you're doing any project around the house or in the garden or whatever you're doing, you know, you can just toss it in your pocket and they're perfect for whatever might come up. Like a Swiss Army knife, bow with pliers. So I don't know. I think it was a great concept. I think Mr. Leatherman was a genius for coming up with it. And I'm glad that they're still American made right in Oregon here in the United States. I just took my new one out of the package. That's this one. And they come in a real nice little, nice little box, you know, it's got the um, explanation and your warranty and you know, an explanation of how the locks work, you know, and they always come with some kind of a sheath. 
This one came with a bonus multi-tool that's like a little Leatherman carabiner that's got a little wrench here to tighten things up with, a bottle opener, a little saw, and it's also a carabiner. That's kind of cool. I don't know if they all come that way now or not. This is the first new one I've bought in many years. And I'm looking forward to breaking it in and abusing it the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> anyway, let us know what you think, thoughts, comments. Salute out to Leatherman. They've been going now as a company since, I think, 1983. That's a long time. I bet they go 100 years. How about you? So this is Scott signing off from Whiskey and Sunshine.